What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and I am the author of The Wealth Journey and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So we're gonna dive right into one of my favorite personal finance topics ever and this right here is the foundation that will lead to you building wealth in the future. So if you're excited about that, leave a like, hit the subscribe button, we're gonna jump right into this right now. So when it comes to building wealth, you first have to become financially stable, you have to first become financially secure and know exactly where all your money is going at all times. So that's your saving and your budgeting, right? So the way I think about it is this. When I get my paychecks for the month, where is my money going? And with that said, I just wanna share with you how I prioritize my money every month and how I also think you should prioritize it for maximum results. So the way I like to think about it is this, my ultimate financial goal is to only have to answer to myself and God. And with that said, that statement is extremely powerful and that is exactly how I prioritize my money. So as you would expect, my money goes to me and to God first, literally at the same time. Those are my first two priorities every single month. And so what that looks like is 10% goes to my tithes and then whatever percentage I want goes to me that I know that I can handle. And that's how it goes every single paycheck for me. And that doesn't matter if it's like a paycheck from work, a paycheck from YouTube, a paycheck from Amazon, because you know those book sales are moving up a little bit, you know what I'm saying. And you know, that's if I get a bonus at work, that's if I get a raise at work, a promotion at work. That's how I treat my finances no matter what's going on, no matter how high they go, I'm always going to do that exact same thing. The way it may look like for you may be different, but let me break down what this looks like for me exactly. So first of all, I'll break it down into my normal savings account. So obviously you have your checking and your savings. So a portion of what's in my checking, because I do want to make sure I have a little bit of cushion in my uh, checking so I don't have to reach into my savings. I go ahead and have at least 2000. That's my number. Your number may be different. It just depends on how your finances are set up at this very moment. But for me right now, my minimum number for my savings is $2,000. I don't typically go over that because I use the rest of the money to get transferred over to my emergency fund, which I have holding in a high yield savings account. It's not much, but it does yield a lot more than what your average savings account is. Just for example, my normal savings account is about 0.01%, whereas my high yield savings account is 2.15%. So that money is growing a lot faster per year, which I'm not so much putting it in there for growth, but if I can get growth, it's definitely going to go in a high yield savings account, which makes sense for an emergency fund. And this right here is how you dig your well before you're thirsty. You don't wait for a catastrophic event to happen. You don't wait for your job to let you go or to lay you off. You don't wait for a recession or a pandemic or an economic downturn. That's what you don't do. This is why these are my top two priorities. And ultimately, that is your protection, which is what we all need, especially nowadays. You may not be able to do all of this at one time. That's why I recommend that you look into both of your paychecks or however many times you get paid per month. You might be able to get some of this done on your first paycheck and the rest of it done on your second paycheck. That's okay and that's perfectly fine. But I want you to think about these two being the priority when you make any financial decision ever because this is your future. And the fun fact about this is your job has already realized that you must get paid first. That's why whenever you get paid before the taxes even get taken out because this is a tax advantaged account, they don't even take the taxes out of this portion of your money. It goes straight to your 401k untaxed and that goes straight to you the moment your paycheck hits. So your job is doing that for you, so you've gotta do it for yourself as well. And since this happens automatically, you might as well automate the amount of money that's coming to you. And if you want to know how to do that, if you're not sure how to do that, I have an entire video that goes over it. I have a whole class on it. It's called How to Double Your Savings. Check that out after this video if you're interested in learning how to double your savings. And then of course, the next step is gonna be your bills. So your bills, this is when your bills come in. Most people do it backwards. They pay their bills first, and then they pay all the other priorities but if you pay your bills first, like all your other priorities are gonna go under the wayside in some way, shape, or form. And I didn't realize this until I started paying myself first and I set automations for a specific date every single month for a certain amount of money to go into my savings account and into my emergency fund without fail. Until I started doing that, I didn't realize how much money I could actually start saving. I literally doubled my savings just by doing that. 
which is why that video is called How to Double Your Savings. Anyway, after that, you pay all your bills and stuff. And I'm not talking about debt just yet. I'm talking about your specific bills like your rent, your utilities, your car note if you have one, your phone bill, your phone bill, your Netflix, all the stuff that's consistent. Go ahead and pay those and have them automated every month. And the cool thing is once you have all these automated, you'll be able to look at them every month and then you'll be able to tell, okay, this is what date it usually comes out of my account every month. So then you'll start to be able to anticipate it. And if you're wanting to save even more money on top of doubling your savings, check out my video on how to master budgeting and saving money. If I had to recommend an order, I would say watch how to double your savings first and then watch how to master budgeting and saving your money. This is free information that can literally triple the amount that you're saving every month without sacrificing your lifestyle for it. And if you don't feel comfortable automating all of your bills, try automating some of it and then see where you're falling short and see how you can pad up that gap via doing the saving that I was just talking about. I've definitely been in the same boat before and so I know what that's like. The, the best way it worked for me was just to do a few things at a time until I was able to build up to everything being automated. And it turned out for me, I just wasn't really paying attention to my spending like I should have. And as soon as I started paying attention to it, then I was able to automate everything, including my savings. And the last thing we're going to go over is debt. So I'm talking student loans, I'm talking credit cards, and you're going to prioritize whichever debt has the highest interest rate, which is typically going to be your credit card. So if you have minimum payments on everything else, that's fine. But if you have extra money, you want to throw it at the debt that has the highest interest rate so you get out of debt a lot quicker. And so you can finally have a clear mind because honestly, this is the part of the process where most people stop. This is where most people are stuck at right now. And for the longest time, these three right here were the only thing my money was going towards. And that was okay. And I had to understand and accept that that was okay. That at that point in my financial journey, all I was doing was saving money for myself, paying my tithes, paying my bills, and throwing most of my money at my debt. Only I was throwing most of my money at my student loans, which doesn't have like high interest. I didn't have any credit card debt because I'd always been pretty like good with my credit cards. I, I never really spent a ton of money on my credit card. And if I did, I had the money to put it right back up there and pay it off immediately. But everybody's not in that situation. So I will say if you're in student loan debt, don't be in such a rush to pay it off. There's all there's other things you can prioritize. Like if you have other forms of debt, like credit card debt, I would worry about paying that off first. And as you can see, they're forgiving a bunch of student loans or a good bulk of most student loans. So for a lot of people, student loans are going to get knocked out anyway. So you don't have to worry so much about that. I'll, right now at this time, I would focus on the high interest types of debt. And this is so you can become established because remember the first step you're building your regular savings and you're building your emergency funds in tandem. So already that's building your confidence and plus 10% is going towards your faith if you if you believe in that or not. Like it just depends on what you believe in. But either way, the money's going to you towards what you believe in, towards what you care about. It going, it's going towards the number one priorities in your life. It's going towards what's currently going on, which is your bills, your rent, your utilities, the roof over your head, the food on your table, all that good stuff, anything that you can provide, the water, all that stuff. Basically, your lifestyle is what you're then fueling. And then your money's going toward debt. And that right there is what gets you financially stable. That is right there what makes you a responsible adult. And that in and of itself is extremely powerful because there are not a ton of people who have their priorities that much together. And it's going to build confidence. You're bettering yourself at the same time because you're bettering your finances. You're bettering your future. You're becoming more confident. And because of this, you're tracking where your money's going. And if you want more information on how this all interacts with one another and why it goes in that specific order and how it can add true value to your life, check out my book. It's called The Wealth Journey. It's available on Amazon and you can check it out in the link up here. But all I want to ask you is don't just stop right here because there's a bunch of endless opportunities. Now we need to talk about your future. You got what's going on currently under control. That is awesome. You know, you're starting to pay off your debt and you might have a big chunk of your debt paid off. That is awesome. Now we need to start thinking about the future. And what I recommend you put your money in next is a Roth IRA. You have up to $6,000 per year that you can put it in. But this right here, the reason this is so important is because you are literally retiring with this tax free. And that's because the money that's going into the Roth IRA has already been taxed. So when it comes out, there is no more tax. And the beautiful thing about this is you have full control of what you invest in within the account. 
unlike your 401k where the company manages it, you can manage it. You can do a little bit of research and figure out a few things to invest in and get a much higher return than your 401k and not be taxed once you take it out. And just to give you some free information on what you could put in your Roth IRA, VOO and VTI. I'll let you do your own research on that. I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about investments today, but those two are very, very, very secure ways to retire. And some people use either one or the other or both, and they do just fine. They don't have to do any research because these both have tons of, I'm talking over 500 companies, not just any companies. I'm talking about your Apples, your Microsofts of the world, things of that nature. So check those out. That's the information I'm gonna give you today for your Roth IRA. So just think about this, you already have money going into your 401k every month, right? Because your job's already doing that. Well, there's nothing wrong with taking matters into your own hands. You don't have to do the full 6,000 if you don't have the full 6,000 every year, but you can put something in there. You can put 100 in there every month. That money's still gonna compound and it's gonna do wonders for you. So while your 401k gets taxed once you take it out, your Roth IRA won't be taxed once you take it out. So they're both gonna be a match made for you. It's gonna help you out a lot in the future. And then lastly, we have individual investments. This is for my folks who are a little bit more advanced, who already have gotten a bit further along. Those things before is what I recommend to get financially stable and then start building your future and building your wealth and things of that nature. But now we're talking about individual investments. I'm talking individual stocks. Like uh, I'm heavily into Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, and companies of that nature. I'm invested in Google, I'm invested in VOO, VTI. I mean, I'm just telling you what I'm doing, but these are companies that are great. And right now the stock market is down. It is bloody right now, but that right there is an opportunity. Something that used to be $1,000 may be worth, you know, $500 or $200, right? So that means you're getting it at a discount, but this is an asset that you're buying. This isn't like a, a TV or a cell phone or something that depreciates over time. This is an asset that once you put money into it, it may take a few years, but it's going to grow. And when it grows, it's going to go up a lot. You get what I'm saying? So if you're able to accumulate a lot of shares of stock and or ETFs, that right there is what makes people rich. That is what the richest people in the world do a lot of people are skeptical about it i even made a video about it it's called to anyone who is skeptical about investing i highly recommend you watch it if you're interested in making your money grow because this right here is how you make money in your sleep and this is how you double triple quadruple your money i mean i'm sure you've seen those videos or heard people talking about turning ten thousand dollars into like forty thousand dollars that stuff is real but it does take some time but the thing is you cut that time in half when the stocks are at a cheaper price and you're able to get more of them at a cheaper price and then it grows at an exponential rate as stocks tend to do as long as you do your research and invest in the right ones such as the ones that i've already mentioned and that is what i recommend that is where i think your money should go once you get paid is this all going to happen at once absolutely not it took me years to get to a point where i'm able to do all of them you get what i'm saying but it's still powerful that i get to do it anyway i didn't always have multiple streams of income i didn't always have a book i didn't always have a promotion you get what i'm saying at work so this all built up but what i'm saying is this is how i recommend you prioritize your money because this right here is going to take you to the next level you're going to be able to sleep a lot better at night when you open up your bank account it might even cheer you up on a bad day because you're doing the right things you're putting the right amounts of money in there you're able to anticipate how much money is going out every month and how much money is going in those numbers are going to get bigger and bigger as the years go on and you are going to be on your way. And that's what personal finance is all about. We shouldn't have to spend all of our time and energy figuring this stuff out. It's actually pretty simple, but once you get something laid out, like this blueprint that I just laid out, all you do is follow it, you adjust as you need to, because sometimes you will make more money and sometimes you will over or underestimate the amount of money that's coming in, and that's okay. You make adjustments, you make small tweaks to it, and then you perfect it, and then you master your own money. And I want to give you just one more tip before I let you go. Once you are on the first step and you set aside that money for yourself, you can also set aside a sum of money for yourself for just spending money. That's guilt-free spending money. You can also do that because it's not about sacrificing your lifestyle completely. It's about prioritizing where the bulk of your money should go beforehand. And now you know how much money you're gonna have left, so then you don't have to penny pinch and second guess buying things that you enjoy buying. So now you get to live the life you wanna live and you get to build the wealth and the money that you wanna have. So you're not overspending, but you're also not depriving yourself. That is what's important. And that right there is not fun to deal with for anybody. So that's why I make videos like this to help you out, to save you from the frustrations that I've once had.
Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.